Welcome to Past People. To support my channel, please consider subscribing. The abused life of Queen Victoria. When Victoria was just a young girl, she stood as the next in line for the throne of Great Britain. Her uncle, King William IV, harboured deep suspicions towards Victoria's mother and her advisor, whom he regarded as malevolent. Victoria's father had passed away when she was still a child, leaving her mother, the Duchess of Kent, reliant on a man named Sir John Conroy for assistance. Conroy served as the controller of the Duchess's household and held significant influence over her. He had made promises to protect the Duchess following the Duke of Kent's death, causing her to become increasingly dependent on him. Unfortunately, this situation led to a harsh and loveless childhood for Victoria, who longed for maternal affection. Sir John closely monitored every aspect of Victoria's life, from her dietary choices to her reading materials and playmates. Essentially, he was the primary reason Victoria was isolated from the rest of the royal family. Their intentions were clear. Sir John and the Duchess of Kent aimed for Victoria to ascend the throne, with Sir John as her private secretary and the Duchess as regent in case the King passed away before Victoria turned 25. However, Victoria staunchly rejected these proposals, despising John Conroy and resenting the influence he exerted over her mother. Despite Victoria's repeated refusals, the Kensington system was devised to make her so reliant on her mother that the public would have no choice but to appoint the Duchess as regent. The Kensington system was, in many ways, a cruel scheme. While Sir John may have believed he was acting in Victoria's best interest, the mental toll it took on the young Princess Victoria was immense. The system aimed to ensure Victoria's safety by keeping her in semi-seclusion with Kensington Palace, protected her from both illness and potential assassination attempts. Furthermore, her absence from court events distanced her in the eyes of the public from the unpopular reigns of her uncles, King George and William IV, allowing her to emerge as a fresh start or the nation's hope, as Conroy described it. However, a more sinister aspect of the system involved breaking Victoria's spirit and forcing her into submission. It involved strict surveillance, with Victoria never allowed to sleep alone, play with other children or even descend a staircase unaccompanied. Each day she was required to document her behaviour in a behaviour book, facing consequences for her actions. Victoria's education was carefully overseen by her mother, who aimed to ensure that nothing and no one could separate them. It also had the purpose of preparing Princess Victoria for her future role as a ruler, winning the affection of her subjects even before her accession to the throne so that she would be a popular and powerful monarch. Victoria's educational journey began at the age of five. Initially, her tutor was the Dean of Chester, who focused on teaching her scripture. And after each lesson, her mother would conduct drills. And when Victoria turned eight, she commenced learning proper manners and ladylike behaviour. Her curriculum included reading, writing and mastering languages such as Greek, Latin, Italian, French and German. The Duchess imposed a strict daily schedule with morning lessons starting promptly at 9.30, a break at 11.30 and afternoon lessons resuming at 3pm until 5pm. However, the education system proved to be a complete failure and Victoria grew to resent her mother due to it. Victoria was never permitted to be away from her mother, tutor or governesses, including Baroness Legend and the Duchess of Northumberland. She was isolated from other children, closely monitored and documented by her mother and Sir John, including her interaction with others. During her childhood, Victoria only had two playmates, Princess Theodore of Lenigan and Sir John's daughter, Victoire although her relationship with the latter was not particularly friendly. Victoria was also restricted from leaving the palace grounds that she called home. She visited Claremont, her uncle Leopold I of Belgium's residence, 
on only two recorded occasions, which significantly influenced her perspective on the system. It's previously mentioned when the Duchess and Sir John realised that Victoria would soon inherit the throne, they attempted to seize power, but Victoria stood firm against their threats. King William IV, who did not trust the Duchess or Sir John, expressed his disapproval during his last birthday meal. Unfortunately, this would be his final birthday and his outburst about the Duchess's advisers led to her leaving the room in anger, leaving young Victoria in tears. As Victoria entered her late teens, she had had enough of her mother and Sir John. From a young age, she had been subjected to the following eight rules of the Kensington system. Victoria was never permitted to solitude and always had to sleep in her mother's chamber. Victoria cannot meet strangers or third parties without the governess present. Victoria was required to hold an adult's hand while descending the stairs to prevent falls, and Victoria confirmed this rule in her adult life. Young Victoria had to maintain a behaviour journal to record her daily conduct, allowing her mother to evaluate her progress. Sometimes it was commendable, and other times very naughty. Victoria's public appearances were meticulously orchestrated publicity tours. This aimed to distance her from the unpopular reigns of her uncles, Kings George IV and William IV, presenting her as the nation's hope. Victoria was forbidden from participating in the scandalous and intimate dance known as the waltz, not even with other royal relatives, and she only waltzed after her marriage to Prince Albert. Young Victoria had dietary restrictions and was limited to consuming plain foods like bread with milk and roast mutton. Her favourite indulgences, sweetmeats and fruit were off limits. To build her strength, Victoria engaged in exercise with Indian clubs, wooden clubs shaped like bowling pins, and utilised a contraption with pulleys and weights. She also required to get plenty of fresh air, resulting in her courtiers often feeling chilly. As Queen Victoria neared her 18th birthday, her uncle King William IV offered her a household and an allowance, a proposition that did not sit well with Sir John and the Duchess. They were incensed. On the 20th of June 1837, King William IV passed away and Victoria ascended to the throne as Queen. Her initial actions as Queen were straightforward. She finally had the freedom that she longed for from her mother and Sir John, and throughout her life Victoria had shared a bedroom with the Duchess, but now she insisted on having her own room with her own belongings. Moreover, she wanted some time to herself and mandated that she could take independent walks for an hour each day. The home-loving Victoria would become the ideal figurehead for a nation weary of the excesses and debauchery of the previous kings. The strain on Queen Victoria's relationship with her mother was irreversible. She resisted changing her mother's status and refused to appoint Sir John as her private secretary. It wasn't until Victoria married and started her own family that their relationship began to thaw. The Duchess of Kent became a devoted grandmother and upon Sir John Conroy's passing, she wrote to Victoria acknowledging his mixed impact, stating... He has been of great use to me, but unfortunately has also done great harm. Victoria, in response, mentioned that those days were long past and best forgotten. When the Duchess of Kent fell ill in 1859, a concerned Victoria wrote to her uncle, King Leopold I of Belgium, expressing her deep affection. I hardly myself knew how I loved her or how my whole existence seems bound upon her until I saw looming in the distance the fearful possibility of what I will not mention. The Duchess recovered this time, but her final illness struck in March 1861. Victoria sat by her mother's bedside, holding her hand on a footstool, and realised that she had passed away. The Duchess of Kent passed away on the 16th of March 1861, and Albert took Victoria to the adjoining room, and a grief-stricken Victoria wrote to her uncle, King Leopold. On this, the most dreadful day of my life, 
does your poor heartbroken child write one line of love and devotion. She is gone. Victoria mourned for weeks and deeply regretted their estrangement. Victoria grew up under a strict set of rules that essentially deprived her of her childhood. She wished her mother had been more nurturing and less under the influence of a manipulative man. Even after everything, she longed for a better relationship with her mother, especially after the birth of her own children. It's clear that Sir John Conroy was indeed a manipulative figure, but his unfavourable reputation among historians may also be attributed, in part, to snobbery within the court establishment due to his lack of aristocratic background. Sir John Conroy had earned his position through his own efforts, which some have found troubling over time. The system implemented during Victoria's upbringing had three key components, and in reality the first two were successful. Victoria was kept safe, and her carefully orchestrated public appearances generated considerable warmth from the public. Sadly, it could be argued that while Victoria's harsh upbringing didn't break her, it played a significant role in shaping her reign. Please continue to support my channel by subscribing. Please comment, like and subscribe if you wish for more stories and leave your suggestions below and I will endeavour to cover them.